We found a brand new set of drift mines that's giving us the biggest pieces of black sand and gold we've found at any of the drift mines. And today, we're going to be high banking some buckets. That is the Gold Fox Mini Monster which we'll be using today to process our buckets of pay dirt. And unlike all the other drift mines where there is no gold in the main channels, this is the exact opposite. All of the gold seems to be in the main channels and not really anywhere else. That is the black sand and gold that I managed to recover from just half a dozen test pans. Look at those flakes, they are so nice. So easy. Oh, that's a lot of black sand. This is literally the first day that we've been on this particular set of drift mines and therefore we're still working it out but today my plan is to run at least a few buckets worth of dirt from various spots in this gutter and see what kind of gold comes out. Oh hello friend, there is a lot of gold in this section. Alright gold, come to papa. We've had spatterings of gold all over that area and this is the main gutter that we're finding most of the nice flakes in and we just hit this massive drop riffle. That is a perfect gold trap and hopefully that's got at least four soybeans in it. The other spot is this section here is actually an inside bend which is really interesting because this seems to be working just like a creek. The other drift mines the gold was sort of smattered all over the place and you were looking for really tiny water erosion channels and the main ones had nothing in them. In this case it seems to be behaving exactly the same way that the main creek is and concentrating the gold on things like inside bends and after drops. Not as much black sand as I thought there was going to be in here, but that's okay. That means we can run another bucket. So I uh, guess we'll go get another bucket. Pumice, can't eat it. Enough not to pumice with. One of the hardest things to do when you come to a new area is figure out where to dig. You have unlimited options to test everything and just figuring out the one spot that you want to stick your shovel in and hopefully find gold, oh, it's a challenge. This is you, mate. Mmm, power. It's legitimately sand with big bits of quartz. I don't know much about electricity, but I'm sure that's safe. Totally safe. Maximum OH&S. I'm still not seeing a heap of black sand. I mean, I know there's chunky coarse black sand in this, but where is it? I can tell there's lots of gold in there because uh, it's shining out your pan. <laughs> 1500 ounces. Sounds like gold. There's almost no black sand in this. What is up with that? <laughs> oh yeah, actually I told a lie. There is. <laughs> Man, that stuff is coarse. And the gold flaky. That's just from that tiny little square at the top. They're coarse little flakes. Like they're quite coarse. They've got shape to them. They're not just squished flat, which is what you normally get. So maybe we'll get a decent take of gold. I mean, really, I'm encouraged. I feel encouraged. I feel like I have got a participation award for today. And the next man scrape participation award goes to Chris Vogus. Oh, oh. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. 
Michael Jackson's bad. I've waited so long. Are you proud of me now, Dad? Don't worry, we know he is. As the tribal gold prospector hunts for his prey, he has to take stimulants to keep going in the form of soy boys. I learned a really interesting thing, which is uh, high velocity gravel. Quartz has a hardness of 2.6 on the Mohs hardness scale. It means that generally speaking, it's a lot harder than most other things in a creek. So when you get really rounded quartz, it indicates a high velocity of water movement over a long period of time. And it's a really good indicator for gold. Row, row, row your gravel. Gently down the mine, merrily, merrily, merrily. It's gold I'd like to find. I was telling Fibs there's one. That pile was not so merrily. Um, when we find it, we'll show you. A few minutes later. After much sacrifice and 15 Sherpas lost, we found it. One little 10 inch pan and we got some nice coarse flakes and some super coarse tin. As we expected, that gold was in the quartz. Look how much quartz there is. Been drinking too many soy boys. <laughs> so fit. Yeah, so I'm doing the thing that all my uh, subscribers are screaming at me about in the comments. I've got two buckets to balance myself out. And, um... Some of the gold flakes I've seen in these concentrates are actually big enough to detect with the gold monster. And I'm thinking it might be worth coming out here, stripping those big gravels off the top of those piles and detecting the mud. I've found a few flakes at the other drift mines doing exactly the same thing. Right at this point here, these spray bars create a ribbon of water that goes across the entire top of the box. That causes a rolling action. The more that water rolls around, the more that the rocks get cleaned, the more clay gets broken up and the more gold gets released. And really heavy things like black sand and gold will get trapped in that rolling action. So safe, so safe. It is getting pretty late in the day, so we're gonna do a full clean out and see what we got. I wanna do just the top miner's moss on its own to see how much gold we got from those two buckets that landed at the top of the sluice, and then we can do the rest of this at home on the middle table. This is just the top piece of miner's moss and those little tiny test pans indicated we should see some coarse chunky black sand like that. Please tell me there's gold in it still. Oh, there is. Oh, there is. Yeah, nice little flakies. I know we said that we're gonna clean it up at home and we are, but I am gonna clean that out and have a cheeky little peek because cheeky peekies are good, right? What idiot put no water in this? <laughs> You normally get black sand like this in Reedy Creek itself, but not normally in that kind of quantity. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, there'd be gold in there. There'd be gold in that dirt. Hell yeah. That right there is the best find of the day. That is a shotgun pellet. And that means that I've been prospecting.
For a day of testing in a brand new area, I am really excited to see that kind of coarse tin and that kind of nice chunky gold. There's a lot more work that needs to be done in this area to narrow down the premium deposits, but for now, home, clean up, and on the scales. Getting to the cleanup stage is often the best part of working in a new area because this stage right here tells me what kind of gold I can expect in the future. I've taken a series of mesh screens and classified down the soil to different sizes. That's our minus 20 mesh and that's our minus 50 mesh. And this is our over 20 mesh. And as soon as I dumped this on the miller table, I spotted a nice little picker. We have the plus and minus 20 mesh all done, and now it's time to do the minus 50. This is where most of our gold should be. That was so freaking fast. That tin was way lighter than normal, and that's what we managed to recover in our under 50 mesh. That's a nice flaky gold I managed to recover from just five or so buckets out of those new drift mines. Not bad for my first time there and definitely worth exploring further. But let's find out how much it weighs. I'm gonna guess that there may be a third of a gram. That wouldn't be too bad for the first time in a new spot. Hey, 0.30! I am getting better at this guessing thing because that is worth $24.30 Australian at the time of recording, which is about the equivalent to three soy boys. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears while we peace and I'm out.